Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous Sunday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on Sunday, August 22nd, 2021. I guess there's some rumors about some hurricane slamming into New York. Uh, you know, they do need to sell plywood at Home Depot. Got to keep those plywood sales going and those gas lines forming. Yep, yep, yep. Another big fizzle, I am glad to report. But good lord, go down there and check those videos and pictures from Tennessee if you want to know where the action is. But it is a beautiful Sunday morning here. So uh, it is time for my Sunday morning doomsday sermon. And I, as I mentioned yesterday, I found this one on Common Dreams so over there on those little, you know, those little lefties over there at Common Dreams. It's written by a fellow I have never heard of in my life, David Corton, K-O-R-T-E-N. Who is David Corton? Dr. David Corton is the author of Agenda for a New Economy. How about the great turning from empire to earth community, oh yeah, and change the story, change the future, a living economy for a living earth. And the international bestseller, When Corporations Rule the World, he is the co-chair of the New Economy Working Group, uh, founding member of the Business Alliance for Local Living Economies, and president of the Living Economies Forum, and a member of the Club of Rome. Yes, he holds um, PhDs and MBA and PhD from Stanford and Harvard Business School. So this man, I guess he is the man to talk about all of these, you know, ecological economies. And uh, so his essay, which I guess came originally out of Yes! Magazine. Yes! Magazine. <clears throat> A viable human future depends on living with less. We cannot eat money, and there are no winners on a dead earth. Yeah, so, guys, as we're going through this, I'm going to take the uh, semantic license of using the words less and fewer interchangeably. Uh, so, uh, less can mean fewer, and fewer can mean less. I understand when uh, we're saying less, technically the word is fewer, but we're going to leave the grammar Nazis behind. We all know what less means. And uh, as I'm reading this, uh, I want you to see how long it takes you to figure out the one word following the word, whether you choose the word less or fewer, as we go down the list, what we need less of and fewer of on the planet to guarantee a viable future, uh, how long is it going to take you to figure out the missing word in this article from this economist? And anyway, I'm going to leave that up to you. All right, take it away, David Corton. Science tells us that we now have fewer than 10 years to reduce the human burden on Earth or trigger tipping points in Earth's natural systems from which there is no return. Most discussions center on the climate emergency, but we also have crises related to air water, soil, species extinctions, and more. So we have 10 years to reduce the human burden on Earth. 
No, we needed to reduce the human burden on Earth about when Miguel Cervantes was writing Don Quixote in the year 1500. But so we're going to figure out how we can reduce the human burden on this planet. Okay. The primary cause of our crisis of our crises, plural, is well known. The primary cause of our crises. So what is the primary cause of all of our multitude of crises? According to the Global Footprint Network, humans currently consume at a rate 1.7 times what Earth can sustain. Yet we have only one Earth and no hope of finding another one soon if ever. The most recent report from the IPCC confirmed what we already knew. We have run out of time. I guess the window of opportunity has slammed shut. We have run out of time and must now take drastic actions to avert an even worse catastrophe. A viable human future depends on living with less. Does that mean ah, sacrifice? Ah, ah, ah. Does that mean sacrifice? Uh, no, no, no. This is Yes Magazine. Does that mean sacrifice? Does living with less mean sacrifice? Hmm. Does it mean leaving more people behind? I could make a comment here, but uh, this is uh, this man's rant, not mine. Or is this challenge an unprecedented opportunity to achieve a better future for all of us? The question of how much is enough? Yes, which is the theme of the fall 2021 issue of Yes Magazine poses a foundational question for our time. Yes. Daily reports on economic indicators such as GDP celebrate increases in consumption and sound alarm bells when consumption declines. Meanwhile, daily news reports tell of one climate-related disaster after another. Rarely, if ever, do we hear serious discussion of the connection between growing GDP and growing environmental disasters. The question is of how much is enough begins an essential conversation. Yes, how many, how much, or how many, whatever, how much, how many is enough begins an essential conversation. It is one that usually involves exploring what we as individuals can do to limit our consumption. Asking, when is less more invites us to look at societal choices over which we have little individual control. In examining these societal level choices, we can see areas, we can see areas on which we can potentially join in common cause. Let us look at several key areas where less or fewer could be more. Okay. Uh, and he breaks this down into seven different ways. Okay, there are seven topics of conversation. Okay. When, when an economist, an ecological, ecological economist breaks it down into seven areas, several, 
seven key areas where less could be more. All right, I'm not. I'm going to put the link on here. What I'm going to do is read the heading and the first paragraph. If you want to fill in the gaps of this, uh, you can go back and read the rest of this. Number one, deadly weapons. Humans have long dreamed of peace, yet we consume enormous amounts of resources for war. A recent study found that the U.S. Department of Defense accounts for an estimated 80% of the federal government's energy consumption. The Defense Department is also the planet's single largest institutional consumer of petroleum, which supports the world's largest collection of guns, tanks, military aircraft, and warships. Yes, though the U.S. military imposed the largest environmental burden of any nation's military, the U.S. is only one nation among many with large militaries. Yes. Um, okay, and then it goes on there. Okay, number two. What can we use less of? Uh, okay, we can use fewer weapons of mass destruction. Number two, we can use less mis- or disinformation. Yes, a healthy society needs responsible media to inform us and connect us with each other. Our expanded communication capabilities create an unprecedented potential for us to join in creating an ecological civilization that works for all of life. Tragically, our ever more extraordinary communications capabilities are most often used to manipulate our minds for purposes contrary to our well-being. This includes advertising that promotes wasteful even harmful consumption and propaganda to promote socially and environmentally destructive political agendas. Yes. Okay, how about number three on the list? We need less financial speculation. Money is nothing but a number that has no existence outside of the human mind. It can be useful as a tool, but money becomes a threat to life when its only purpose is to accumulate more money. The structures of modern society makes it virtually impossible to live without money, which gives in enormous power to those who create money and decide how it is used. Yes, do you think so? Uh, so what is the gross world product? A global GDP for 2021 is projected to be around 94 trillion dollars. Ninety-four trillion dollars. Yes. Less financial manipulation would give us radically increased equality with far less waste. Okay, number four. I just had a... Uh, didn't I do a, a rant on this recently? The Bitcoin con. Private cyber currencies are a form of counterfeiting. Bitcoin, a cyber currency favored by global cyber criminals and tax evaders, is an especially costly example. Uh, and then, of course, talking about the energy consumed in mining Bitcoin. Uh, anyway, we've been over that. Okay, number five on the list, global supply chains. 
Until very recently in our history, we organized our economies around the labor and needs of local communities. This facilitated repair, reuse, recycling, and resilience and allowed communities to work within the capabilities of the Earth's regenerative system. But global trade rules first introduced only in the 1990s stripped place-based living communities of control of their markets, labor, and other resources and allowed transnational corporations to consolidate their power without concern for the well-being of workers, customers, and nature, and of course, China. China has now become the epicenter of a highly fragile interdependent system of global supply chains involving the massive environmentally destructive long distance movement of material goods by sea, land, and air. This, of course, we're talking, uh, though he doesn't mention it here, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is the number one most pressing threat against life on this planet today is China. All right. Number six on the list we need less of, short stay air travel. I don't know why he qualified this with short stay air travel. Air travel has helped to bring us together as a global species, but it consumes enormous amounts of time, energy, and other resources for purposes that can often be better served in less socially and environmentally costly ways. <clears throat> the purposes of a great many international business meetings, you know, such as all of these climate talks, for instance, and professional conferences could be better served by sharing information electronically, blah, blah, blah. Uh, visits to destinations on your bucket list for purposes of bragging rights commonly overwhelm the destinations to give you little more than a selfie in a crowd. Okay, and the number seven and last thing on the list that we need less and fewer of to uh, make it a more viable future would be auto-dependent cities. Yes, yet another example relates to our dependence on cars. Uh, anyway, we all know about cars, a growing number of major cities are taking steps to become less car dependent. Yes. Uh, okay, so that's the list. So wrapping up, uh, I'm still waiting for the missing word in this article. So, why do we have so many wasteful sources of consumption? Culturally, this stems from excessive individualism and societally, it stems from using money rather than healthy living as a standard of economic performances. These two forces spur the wasteful consumption that manifests in nearly every aspect of our life. Uh, as we learn to think and act as an interdependent global species, we must look critically at all the forms of consumption that could be eliminated to the ultimate benefit of us all. Such an examination is needed if we are to transition to an ecological civilization. Yes. Um, we face
face a defining choice. We can hold to course with an economy that grows GDP to provide a few with the opportunity to make a killing as they prepare to escape to outer space, or we can embrace the current opportunity to transition to an ecological civilization with a living economy dedicated to supporting us all in making a secure and fulfilling living on a thriving living earth, awakening to the reality that we cannot eat money and there are no winners on a dead earth, points us to the latter as the clearly better choice. Thank you, uh, David Corton, for that uh, stirring sermon. But David Corton, like everyone else, just has a blind spot. I'm going to take a wild guess that David Corton is a proud father, and by the looks of him, probably a proud grandfather by now. Uh, as we look at all the ways that we can reduce the humanity's burden on planet Earth, yes. <clears throat> by flying less. Let's see, what did he say? Stop minting Bitcoin, fly less, bike around your city. Anyway, guys, I'll let you fill in your own blanks, but it is a gorgeous uh, day, although I do see a few clouds sneaking in from the east here going on noon today, and... Uh, so I got to get out there and clean up this tiny house for the newest set of guests coming in to the Airbnb tonight. And I suggest you get out there and enjoy your human burden on the planet while you still can. Bye, guys. Okay, the Killer Creek has receded. So, uh, no flash flood watch in effect for bugs in a jar farm. I am happy to report. Bye, guys.